Greetings, everyone, and welcome back to my cybersecurity show. I've got a question for you. You ever played around with Metasploit? Sure you have, right? You're, you're into cybersecurity. That's why you're watching this, this channel. Have you ever created a payload with um, MSF Venom and got that and you're like, oh, this is going to be awesome. I'm going to get that reverse shell and you drop it on the disk of a Windows operating system and, and then all of a sudden Windows Defender jumps up like a, a man on fire and says, what the hell is this? No, sir. Yeah, I've been there. I've been there. I'm sure if you're watching this, you probably have been as well. And that kind of that kind of burns my biscuits. I hate that, right? You know what I hate even more is if I want it to work, I can go in and shut off Windows Defender's real-time protection. And then, yeah, it works. But then you feel dirty. You feel icky. You're like, I mean, that's, it, it doesn't seem fair. I want it to work when those defenses are turned on. And I thought, yeah, I want it to work when those defenses turned on. Well, if Metasploit's not going to do it, or not without some severe massaging, can I build my own thing that does it? Welcome to today's episode. I built my own thing that does it. Yay, it's fun. And here we have it in a GitHub repo. I call it Update Script. Honestly, I've called it many things, but Update Script is the uh, traditional name for it, the original name, the OG name for this thing, because I actually did this a while ago. And it worked for forever, like a couple of years. But recently it has been uh, been getting hit by Windows Defender. And I thought, well, back to the drawing board, ladies and gentlemen. We got to fix that. So I did. It fixed. It worked. And here it is. So we got uh, a few things going on. I have transitioned from using a batch file as my initial like compromise, my dropper, or whatever you'd like to call it, my, my implant. And I've, I've switched to using Go because I've been learning Go and it helps me learn more about Go and I have more Go skills. Go, Go. <laughs> right. So I've got secup.go, which is kind of the main engine of, of what's going on here. It's going to start my HTTP server so that I can serve up the payloads that are going to also be generated by secup.go, which utilize these template files for creating payloads such as WinSecup, which is Win Security Update. This is all like framed or, or with the premise of a, a phishing campaign kind of thing going on so that your computer is having trouble updating and therefore, you know, your IT security team is, is trying to get it to update. Please download and run this file kind of thing going on. And I, I did run a fish. Let me get that fish up. So that we, we're talking about it. Let's let's take a look at it. So I'm going to need you to hit the I believe button. Pretend we're opening our email. And we've opened this email. And wait for it. There it goes. And here is our email. It says, your PC is having issues with downloading and installing the latest updates. Yes, thank you, Microsoft Edge. No, please snooze. There we go. Uh, downloading and installing the latest updates. This can negatively affect your organization's security, leaving it open to a security breach. So the whole social engineering thing, it's its a phishing lure. Whereas please, oh, I even messed this up. Please affix. <laughs> please affix. As, it really does look like a phishing email, doesn't it? Because I did bad grammar and everything. So please affix has been issued by your IT department. Click here to download the zip file. Extract the file. The password to extract the file is update. Double click the extracted file. Congratulations. You've successfully updated your system. Sorry for the inconvenience. Thank you for your cooperation. And so we got ourselves a lovely little lure, a little link. They click on that and it's going to reach out to that HTTP server and it's going to grab this file updater.zip, which we will have to create. You can, you can do anything you want. Create your lures like you like. Your fish can do anything you want it to do, but that's that's basically what we got going on here. All right, let's jump back over here. So what I'm going to need to do is, uh, you know, clone this repo, get it fired up, and then we should be able to. Plus, I need to start a listener and all that. I always forget to do that, so I, I prompt myself when I run SecUp Go. So when we run SecUp Go, it starts the HTTP server. It generates the necessary payloads and we, it also generates the Go file we'll need to compile into a binary, which we will then create the zip and 
the fishing lure will do its job from there. Okay, let's see if we can make all this action work. So let's go here. And in this corner, I will do a git clone of HTTPS colon slash slash, and it is github.com forward slash Daniel, I E, I can't spell my own name, Lowry forward slash update underscore script. So github.com forward slash Daniel Lowry forward slash update script. Bam. Looks like we're going. Everything looks good. I do an LS and bam, there it is. So we'll CD into the new folder. And now we have all the files that we just saw because that's, that's pretty simple. All right. The first thing we need to do is run secup.go. So I will go run secup secup.go and I will give it the IP address of my attacking machine, my, <clears throat> my command and control. We'll call it that just for ease of, of reference. So let's get the IP dash BR dash C A. And my IP address is 192.168.13. This is a testing environment, ladies and gentlemen. That's how it works. That's why we use those. So I'll just paste that in there and then fire it off. All right, so we can see our L host is 192.168.13, and then there's port 443 is the listening port. That's for firewalling, right? It wants to look like normal traffic. <clears throat> it says start your listener on port 443, and then press enter to continue. All right, let's jump over to here. I've fired off um, uh, Metasploit. <laughs> it's right there, Daniel, Metasploit. And then you make sure you sudo that because we will need 443, and that requires privilege. So we will use exploits multi handler and then we'll take a look at the options. And yeah, right here we need to set that L host, right? So set L host to 192.168.1.3. And then we need to change this L port to 443. So set L port to 443. And then just make sure all that's set correctly, which does look like it. And we're using the generic shell reverse TCP, just the stock, the stock stuff from Metasploit. And I just hit run. And now once that gets fired up, there we go. Started reverse TCP handler. Everything's ready to go. Let's jump back to SecUp. I can now hit enter. And it says, cool. Um, you can see that it, it actually says attack files have been generated. There they are. Update script.go R1 and win secup. The HTTP server is running on port 8,000, which of course this is all open source. So you could change that if you like 80 is probably a better idea, but I was just using 8,000 for right now. And then it says compile and upload update script.exe to the target and execute. Check the listener for connection. Cool. So anybody that grabs that link should show up here to log this to the screen so we can see anybody that, that hits that phishing link. So let's jump down here now. Let's clear the screen. We do an LS. It helps if we go to update script. We now have a few more files, right? We've got R1, which was generated from R1.template. We've got update script.go. We've got win secup, right? So update script.go is going to be our actual, this is going to be our implant file. So we need to compile that into an exe. Simple, I know I'm on Linux, but this is why I love go, because I can just compile for Windows. So go OS equals Windows, and then go run, oh no, I'm sorry, go build uh, update script.go. Unsupported architect, prepare, what's going on there? Oh, because I put window, it's Windows. There we go. That works better. <laughs> Fun. So now we've got ourselves an update script .exe. I want to change that. So I'm just going to move it to updater.exe. Oh, man, I am just messing up all over the place. Move update script.exe to updater.exe. Man, this is just not my day, is it? My head is in the clouds. Now that we have all that, there's updater. Now we just need to zip it up. 
So let's do a zip. I like to do a dash E, give a little encryption. It's going to uh, prompt us for a password just to help us, you know, be more safe uh, as far as defenses go. <clears throat> so let's see here. We need to create a zip file, which we will call updater.zip. And then we put our file in it of updater.exe. Fire that off. I will make the password updater. Updater. There we go. Looks like we now have a zip file. Bada bing. Right there. And we've got our listener running. I think everything's ready to rock. So let's jump back over to our target. We have successfully fished somebody. They click the link. We get a download box, which is rocking and rolling. Updater.zip got nail. Okay, perfect. Notice so far we're not getting any, any you know, anger from any defensive system. So that's good. We still might see like, hey, sample submissions turned off. Just be prepared for that if that does happen. Let's see here. Open the file. No, we'll go. I'll go here. Open the folder that it's in. And then, of course, we follow the, the prompting from our, our fish back there. So I will right click. I will extract all, which should give me this. Hit extract. And then hit updater is the password. Looks like that went well. Cool. Now we have a folder called updater. And this, this machine is kind of sluggish. It's a virtual machine, so it's just on the struggle bus today, I guess. All right, so there's our updater.exe. If we double-click this, hopefully that creates a shell connection and bypasses Windows Defender. Let's see what happens. Double-click. We're going to get something. There we go. Okay, so we do get the first thing. This is smart screen. Right? The Windows Defender smart screen prevented an unrecognized app from starting. Running this app might put your PC at risk. This is the difficult thing to get around without some like serious code signing or, or something to that effect. Um, so it just says unknown publisher. You can make that a part of your social engineering campaign is to say, hey, yeah, you might get prompted about this. You know, smart screen might jump up. Just hit run anyway. I've worked on help desks. So if I were able to actually, like if I was doing vishing or something, and I was speaking with someone about this. I would, they would they would bypass this, bypass this without even thinking. But they would just click run anyway. And this this might be enough, honestly, to get uh, some people to click run away. It won't make everybody. Some people will be like, "Hey, that's weird. I'm gonna hit don't run and call somebody." But there will be those that just go, "Oh yeah, I'm trying to update this thing. Hit run anyway." So we do. We hit run anyway. This is you couldn't see it because it runs by pretty fast, but it says updating just in case someone was looking, it says uh, uh, contacting Windows Update Server, which guess what? It actually does. It actually does reach out to Windows Update and say, hey, are there any updates that I'm, I'm requiring? It does not install them, but it does reach out to Windows Update. So if the fences are looking at, hey, where is this reaching out to? The first thing it sees is Windows Update and not anything like, you know, that it shouldn't. But looks like that went well. I don't see anything crazy going on. Uh, didn't get any alerts. So that's cool. So smart screen was our big complaint, right? That was the that was the one big deal. Let's jump back over to our attack box and see what happened. So there we can see that updater.zip got downloaded. WinSecup got downloaded. A1 got... So these are the different stages of payloads that got downloaded. Everything looks good. If I run over here to Metasploit... Oh yeah, there we go. We have won the game because there it is. We got a PowerShell prompt, IP config, works like a charm, right? Windows IP configuration. There's the IP address of this target device. I can do fun things like who am I, which tells me I am Saitama because I just got done watching One Punch Man series one and I'm stinking hooked to that. <laughs> it was very entertaining. So it's, uh, it's on my brain. So we are logged into Saitama. I can do net user Saitama. And I can see the Saitama. Oh, great. Saitama is an administrator. That's awesome stuff. Now I can start doing more fun things on this machine 
creating persistence, and on and on and on we go. And you'll notice we got nothing from Windows Defender, and that's what we were looking for. So we have won the game. This was a lot of fun. Please, again, don't upload these things to like Virus Total. Turn off sample submission if you are playing with it. Otherwise, it's just going to reduce the shelf life of this being an effective tool for you. So make sure that those things are done in your testing environments before you get too crazy. That said, thanks for watching, everyone. Hopefully you really enjoyed this episode and you enjoy the channel. If you do, show me support. Find that thumbs up and just smack that thing, right? It's a simple little thing. You just go thumbs up. It's probably one of the best things you can do for the channel if you want it to gain uh, a little more traction there on the YouTube world. And I would really appreciate it. Don't forget to leave me a comment as well. Do the uh, subscribe thing is... I got them all, right? I got like, subscribe, comment, notification bell. That's the last one. Until next time, everyone. Thanks for watching and keep hacking.